This is a bodkin point arrow. The mighty medieval bodkin. These bad lads were designed to defeat male armour. And I can already hear the jesters in the comments. What about female armour? Yes, you are hilarious. You can't beat the classics, eh? In all seriousness, though, these devastating little beasts wreaked havoc all across medieval battlefields. And here I have three different variations. We've got your bodkin point, your short bodkin, and your long bodkin or needle bodkin. Now, contrary to popular belief, perpetuated mostly by modern media, these arrows weren't actually very good at penetrating plate armour. Despite what that youth in Game of Thrones said. Penetrates plate at 200 yards. Bollocks. Talking out of his arse. But did you know that medieval armoured knights didn't have as much trouble with the arrowheads themselves as they did with the splinters from shafts that would shatter upon impact with their armour? These splinters would find their way into the little holes on the helms and eventually into the face of the unlucky knight. Now, you can imagine how uncomfortable and painful that would have been, especially when it comes to removing the helm. This became such an issue that as armour began to improve through the years, additions like these guards were added to defend against the splinters from shafts that would shatter on impact with the breastplate. And I can honestly say, my fellow outlaws, this is up there with my favourite medieval arrowheads. From its history right down to its aesthetics, I absolutely love it. Like a little obelisk of death. I've got my longbow and my bodkin arrow. And today, we're going to see if this £50 bow can put this arrow through a piece of male armour. So I'm going to head down to Sherwood Forest and see my mate, the forest archer. Because I reckon he'll be able to sort me out with a nice piece of mail. Or a nice piece of female, eh? Oi, oi! I, I am only jesting. Don't tell my lass I said that. She will not see the funny side. If there's anyone who can sort me out with a bit of authentic riveted male, it's my mate Sir Colin the Forest Archer. All right, big lad. Now, it's worth noting that my longbow is not a war bow. For it to be a war bow, it would have to be around a 70 pound draw weight and upwards. So naturally, my arrows are not war bow arrows. And when you compare my arrows to a war bow arrow, already you can see the difference in the thickness between the shafts. <laughs> Shaft. Ah, he's a good bloke, that forest archer. Always looks after me and my merry lads. And now he's really sorted us out. This is a piece of riveted male armour. And this type of mail is often referred to as chain mail. And believe it or not, but there's a lot of people who get really bent out of shape when they hear the term chain mail. I am not one of those people. I'm really not that arsed. All I know is I'm about to put an arrow through this. Or at least I'm going to try. Come on. So I've placed a piece of male armour at the base of this fallen tree. As you can see, the bodkin arrow has successfully penetrated the male armour, punching through and breaking open the rivets. However, I was hoping to get it through both layers, so I'm going to try and put one straight through the centre. Get that long. Male one, bodkin one. Unsuccessful attempt. This one's for the winner. Bosh. Redemption. The Bodkin arrow has managed to penetrate both layers of the riveted male armour. 2 1 to the Bodkin point. However, you will notice that it's not quite a full penetration, but it would still leave a fairly nasty flesh wound. And once I remove the shaft, the bodkin point remains within the mail. So, depending on where the soldier was hit, it would still continue to do damage for as long as they remained on the battlefield. And if they were to try and stop and pull it out, well, they'd be leaving themselves vulnerable to further attacks. I reckon we should call it today, because I do believe the forest archer wants this piece of mail back. I best not put any more holes in it now, eh?